guys and welcome back for another video. If you are new here, hello, welcome. My name is Kate. Here on this channel we talk all about mom life. We talk about foster care and adoption as I am a foster mama. And we talk about intentional living and living with purpose. So if any of that interests you, I would love to have you subscribe and join the family here on YouTube. So today is going to be another two parenting tips for you. I think I'm going to turn this into a series and just share two little parenting parenting tips that have helped me, things that I'm doing, things that I've learned, things that I've seen other people do. But I think I'm going to start a little series because the last one seemed to go over well. You guys seem to enjoy it. So if you missed it, I'll link that one up here. But we're talking about the when and then and then preparedness. So, so today's two tips I have for you are going to be how you begin and how you end the day. So let's talk about beginning the day. I like to start the day with some sort of affirmations. I like to wake up before my kids so I'm prepared. It doesn't always happen. It's not my strongest suit. It's something I'm really working on and being a lot more intentional about. But having your kids start the day on a positive note just sets them up for a great day for the rest of the day. So I like to say some positive affirmations to my kids in the morning. For example, to Lilia. She is my nurturer. So I just give her positive affirmations about that natural ability she has in her. You know, so to Lilia, I'll say something like, you are so sweet and so kind. Thank you for being so helpful to mommy, being such a good help to your sisters, always being kind and sweet to them. And once you say things like that over and over to your kids, they start to believe it about themselves. So, so if you see, you know, character traits that they're maybe lacking in and you want to kind of speak truth over them or, you know, bring certain attributes into their life, you know, maybe you have a child that is not so sweet and kind. But still say, telling them that they are and telling them, catching them when they are being, I mean, all, no kid is horrible. Obviously, every kid has sweet and kind moments, even if that's not their natural disposition. But just catching them and then just reaffirming that to them and talking about it and speaking those words over them. I'm a strong believer in words have power and speaking these things over your kids is so important. Marissa, for example, she is not the most uh, brave little one. Let's leave it at that. She's kind of, for very often, she was scared of life. And, you know, Lily is my fearless one. So Marissa took her till this year five to finally put her head under the water. Where Lilia can fully swim, like I have no worries about her in the pool. She's completely fine. Marissa panics as soon as she can't feel her feet touch the bottom. So for her, I'm trying to help her get over that. And I will say things like, you are so strong and you're so brave. You're just like a superhero. You know, and we're going to do awesome superhero things today. And I just say little things like that. And sometimes they sound really like cheesy and tacky coming out of my mouth, but they don't feel that way. They think it's awesome that I'm calling them a superhero or that I'm recognizing how sweet and kind and helpful they are. So just kind of speaking these things over them, whether it's something, an attribute that they're lacking and you want to bring into their life or whether it's an attribute that, they, that comes naturally, complimenting them on that or affirming that for them. You know, it just really helps kids to believe in themselves and gives them power over choices and, you know, helps them to have better behavior overall when you're reaffirming those positive attributes in their life. Second tip I have for you is going to pertain to the end of the day. Now, I know mamas, sometimes you're tired, you just want those kids to go to bed and you want to go to bed, have your tea or your wine if you're a wine drinker and just crash and you just want them to get to bed as soon as possible. You're done. They've been bickering. They've been fighting. <sighs> and this is something I need to constantly remind myself, but I don't know if you've noticed this with your kids, but my kids are so much more likely to talk at the end of the day and they're much more likely to open up about things. And this is when I've had my most serious and deepest conversations with my kids. So at the end of the day, I like to lay down with them and ask them what they're, you know, we've read our books, we've prayed, we've done all of that. I either just climb into bed with them or I'll just stand beside them because they have loft beds. And I'll just say, what was your favorite thing about today? And that just gets the conversation going and they'll open up about things. And you know, if they had a particularly hard day or a rough day with behaviors or that sort of thing, I'll say, what was your least favorite part about today? Often Marissa, like she's like, my favorite part was this and this and this and this, but I didn't like when I had to wait for a snack, like little things, but it just really opens that door for communication and allows kind of walls are down, they're tucked into bed, you know, it, but you're just making that extra time for them. They know you want to go to bed too, but it's important to them when they see you making that extra time for them just to talk. So I always like to say, you know, what was your favorite thing about today? And if it was a hard day or you know one of my girls had a hard day at school for example you know what 
what was hard about today at school? I noticed you came home sad. What was hard about today at school? And I mean, if something was particularly difficult, maybe bed, right before bed is not the time to bring it up if it's going to bring up, you know, fresh tears and all of that. Maybe you should have already dealt with that. But it just allows just open lines of communication and your kids will often tell you things that, you know, they forgot to tell you they were too busy to tell you earlier in the day and you just find out little tidbits of information about their life, especially if they're away at school or whatnot. Um, but I just find it's a really, really sweet moment. So I always just like to ask my kids, what was your favorite thing about today or what was the hardest thing about today or what was the most fun thing we did today? And then I say, oh, you know what my favorite thing was? When we went to the park together or when you were such a good helper for mommy when we were shopping. And just reiterate something back to them to let them know that those things are important to me. My kids know that sitting down on the floor and playing with them is not my favorite thing to do. They know that mummies have responsibilities. They know all of this. But when I say something, you know, it, I had so much fun when we played in your dollhouse. Having that quality time and seeing how my daughter's eyes light up when I spend that quality time playing with her in her dollhouse, that is important and that's worth it. And it truly is the favorite part of my day. So it just makes them feel important when you say that something you guys did together was the, your favorite part of the day. You know, not, oh, when you went to bed and mommy got to watch your shows or whatever, right? So just how you begin your day and how you end your day are very important to how the day is going to go, how your next day is going to go. So I just want to encourage you to speak some affirmations over your kids. Remember, words have power. I'm a huge believer in that. Speak truth over your children. Speak affirmations over them. And then just bring it back and recap at the end of the day and talk about what your favorite thing was um, and what, you know, what was something you guys did together that was awesome. What was something that you maybe helped them through? through or something that they helped you with, whatever it may be. But that just helps you to reconnect at the end of the day. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found those two parenting tips helpful, I know I've had a couple people say that they wanted to see this as a series, so I think I'm going to make it a series. But give it a thumbs up if you like those parenting tips. If that's something you do already, leave it down in the comments below. I would love to know. What are some of your parenting tips? I would love to know that as well. I'm always trying to be a pet, better parent, better mom, a less stressed mom, a less angry mom. We all need a little more tips and tricks in our parenting toolbox. Anyways, guys, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.